Hello, welcome back. I'm Ryan on this channel. I uh, react to stuff about Germany. And today, 40 most common German phrases. Now, I can't speak German. So you may be wondering, what am I doing? I don't know. But uh, I think she's gonna say them in English too. So I'm just kind of interested what the phrases actually are. Hey guys. Let's go. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> I've recently realized that I miss Germany so much. It's been eight years since I've studied there and it's been mm. like almost five years since I visited. I decided to recreate my memories. I decided to sit down and remember 40 most common phrases in German. I know That's a lot. I like 40? this format. So this video is about... I don't even know if I can think of 40 American phrases. About phrases that Germans use every day and if you use them, your speech is going to be more natural. So if you're interested, please continue watching this video. Oh, I'm interested. Now I'm going to start with two phrases that you just that have cool. to know. Um, I hope you know them because they're really basic. So, okay. guten tag is the guten way tag. you greet people. And yes, I knew that. Means, hey, hello, guten tag. I kind of knew that. <laughs> guten tag. Guten tag. The second phrase you normally tell people is wie geht's? And wie geht's? If you translate it, how is it going? So how are you? Wie but geht's? if you want to be more informal, if you are meeting with your friend or with your colleague, you can say was geht ab. Uh, and if you translate it word to word, uh, it's like what's going on. You can also hear. Oh, that's cool. So it pretty much directly translates to the same thing we say in America. Well, what's going on? Uh, uh, and if was Get up. If you translate a word to was word, um, it's like, what's going was get on? Up. You can also hear that in American okay, English. Okay. Like, hey, what's going on? So Getting a little German, too excited here. Hello, was geht up? Hello. <laughs> a very standard answer that we haven't learned at school, but my I had a private tutor who taught me that. Uh, she said that Germans use S gate, which is S -gate. I'm fine. It's it's going well. So S gate, and I think this is one of the okay. most common ways to answer the question was was geht up. Uh, you just say S gate. Another phrase. It's kind of same thing in English. It's going. You know, how's it going? Uh, it's going. That literally means like. That's the most bland answer you could give. It's going. You know, how's it going? Well, it's going. It kind of means like not too good. It just means like, eh. Like, you know, it's going. Phrase is if you want to be more specific. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same thing in Germany. You can say, mir geht's gut, which means mir that I'm doing gut. well, I'm doing fine. Now, I'm going to talk gut. about a phrase that is really typical for the place where I studied, and I studied in Dresden, which is uh, Sachsen, and they like to insert those small fillers, and one of the fillers is na, or in, in Dresden they say nö. So if you want to sound nö. more German, add na to everything. For example, when you were explaining something na, 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 and na, na, you na. want to make sure that the person understood, you can say na, alles klar. Uh, which I don't get it. Like, what's the na mean? And you want to make sure that the person understood, you can say na, alles klar. Na, alles klar. Something. And you want to make sure that na, the person alles klar. you can say na, alles klar, uh, which means so, did you Guten get Tag. it? Na, now, alles we are slowly approaching words that are intermediate, upper, intermediate, and almost advanced. Ooh, okay. Now, this is a phrase that you have probably heard. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. And it goes ich. like, ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. This oh. is an idiom. So, idiom is a phrase that you do not... This is more what I was looking for. Word to word. You idiom. have to know the meaning. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Uh, if you translate word, word to word, you will get, I only understand the train station, which has no, no sense, but in German, if you Well, let me try and think of what that would mean. I only understand the train station. <laughs> I think that would mean, if you're trying to say, I only understand the train station. You know, if someone is asking you like a, a tough problem, maybe in school, it's like a math problem, some calculus, and if you're like, <laughs> Listen, I'm a simple guy. I only understand the train station. Okay. Um, you have to know the meaning. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Let me see. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. You know, I only know the train station, people. Uh, if you translate word, word to word, you will get, I only understand the train station, which has no okay. sense. But in German, if you say, I'm a simple man, I grew up on the train station. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. It means that you don't understand a thing. In English, the equivalent would be, it's all Greek to me. So for example, 
What did I say? <laughs> yes! I got it. When you're in a company of friends and everybody speaks German and- What are they trying to say about the train station though? Like, is it is the train station that easy to use there that you're like, I only understand the train station, you know, that's the easiest thing in the world. And you're just a beginner, um, you can say, Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof, which means you don't get a thing. Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof! Another gosh. great phrase, nice. uh, Germans use it a lot. Aller, all, uh, aller Anfang ist schwer. Schwer. Aller Anfang ist schwer. Aller Anfang ist schwer. Which means every beginning is tough. Which is every beginning is tough. Okay, so it just means like if you're learning how to ride a bicycle, you know, aller Anfang ist schwer. You know, it's going to be tough at the beginning. It's true, but when you're studying something new and you're struggling, for example, you're studying to learn German and it's going really slowly, you can write on your wall, Alles Anfang ist schwer. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is going to mm -hmm. help you, it's going to motivate you to overcome those difficulties. Now, if you've been to Germany or... Not if you're struggling to learn German, you might forget what it says. You're like, uh, it might discourage you more. Like, Shit, I can't even remember what my motivational speech says. Right, if you've met a German in your life, you probably know this phrase. And this is Prost. Prost. This is the same as cheers. So when you drink, when you okay. drink German beer, uh, when you want to cheer, Prost. you say Prost. Prost. Eh. A great way to say no, Prost. if you want to sound more informal, is to say ne. So you don't say nein. Nein is very informal. Yes, is, this is the standard word. But ne is again ne ne really informal. You can use it in the circle of friends. Uh, somebody asks you, do you want to go somewhere? And you're like ne. Another great <laughs> phrase is ne. <laughs> is auf jeden like Fall, which means in any case. What is somewhere it? Somewhere you're like ne. Another great phrase is auf jeden Fall, which means auf in any case. Fall. Auf jeden Fall auf, auf gehen wir nach Los Angeles in einer Woche. Uh, in any case, we're going to go to Los, okay, so, uh, Los yeah. Angeles in a week. Okay. Another filler word, when you are thinking of something and you're kind of agreeing with the person, but you are you still have some doubts, you can say, naja. For example, somebody tells you something naja. and you're like, naja, aber ich wollte das <laughs> nicht machen. If you translate it into English, trying to let them down easy, huh? Be well. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, uh, hold on there for a sec. Naja! Uh, so, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna back away. I don't know about what you're saying here. Yes, kinda... well. this sounds good, but I didn't want to do that. Naja. Word number 13. Naja. Uh, I think only Germans have it. I don't know, Russians maybe have it as well, but the word is jein, which jein. is ja yeah and nein together, which is like yes and no together. I don't think there is an equivalent in English, but yeah, hmm. again, if you are is it like in maybe? doubt, you don't want to agree, but you don't want to disagree, you can say yeah. The next huh. this word is one of my favorites. It's chillin, and if you know English, and you should know English because you're watching this video, it's the same as to chill. Ah. Um, there you um, go. <laughs> thinking of an example. Uh, was willst du machen? Uh, ich will chillen. Uh, what do you want to do? I just want to chill. When somebody invites you to do something chill. and you want to go, you can say, Ja, ich bin dabei. For example, ja, ich bin dabei. When somebody invites you to go out, you can, instead of just saying yes, you can say, Ja, ich bin dabei. When somebody starts annoying you ja, and you're dabei. like, Come on, dude, relax, oh. you can say, Entspann dich. Entspann dich, bro. You're being a lot. Uh, it entspann dich. Um, which means relax. Come on. Entspann dich. Entspann dich. Now we're gonna go into the awesome synonyms. So there are several ways that you can say awesome in German instead of saying cool. schön or wunderbar. There are other wunderbar. words that you can use. First word is geil. I like wunderbar. Uh, geil means awesome, as I already geil. said. The second word is fett. Fat. Uh, and you can use it in the meaning of awesome. And the fat, dude, that is fat. I like that. Third word is cuss. It can have Krass. a negative meaning as well when some something is really disturbing. You can say cuss, but normally huh. it's a really strong word for awesome. When you are sick of something, hmm. when you're tired of something, you can say ich habe. It sounds like the American word crass, which is certainly not. <laughs> It's lacking intelligence. Crass. <laughs> die Nase voll. Uh, die Nase die voll, voll haben voll means haben. Uh, to be sick of something, to be tired of something. 
And again, this is an idiom, you do not translate it word to word. This doesn't mean that something is stuck in your nose. This is just the meaning of being tired of something. <laughs> the next phrase is Bock haben and it comes with the preposition auf. Ich habe Bock aufs Essen, which means yes, I would like to eat something. Bock haben. Another phrase, I use it in English all the time. Bock haben. That, mean, that just means you want to eat something. Bock haben. All the time. Bock haben. Uh, fingers crossed. The equivalent in German is jemandem die Damen drücken. I'm not going to remember that. That's a word, that first thing. J D M. Jemandem. Jem die Dam die Damen drücken. Ich drücke dir die Damen. Uh, which means I'm keeping fingers crossed for you. Ich werde dir die Daumen drücken, dass du bestehst. When you want to tell somebody to wait a little, you can say einen Augenblick bitte, which means can you wait for einen Augenblick, a twinkle bitte. of an eye? Like, oh, for... can you wait for a twinkle of an eye? Like a blink or what? what is a twinkle of an eye? Like a blink? It must be. A really, really short period of time. Einen Augenblick bitte. Okay, now we're going Because here in America, if you say like a twinkle in, in your eye, it means that the light hit it in a certain way and you see like, you know, like a little twinkle in your eye. Oh. I'm gonna go it's kind of a metaphor. A little into the phrases that you would use if you're traveling to Germany, if you are buying stuff and you want to ask somebody for something at the shop. Uh, when you want to know the price, you say, wie viel kostet das? Uh, which means how much does this wie viel kostet das? cost? Wie viel kostet das? Wie viel when you go into the shop and the das? shop assistant approaches you, he or she will probably ask you, was möchten Sie? Uh, which means, what do you want? What are you looking for? Machten the next one, Sie. really useful for Americans traveling. I thought they just left you alone. I don't like it when they ask me what I'm looking for here in America. I thought they left you alone in Germany. Was möchten Sie? Means, what do you want? What are you looking for? The next one, really useful for Americans traveling abroad. I've just realized that some banks actually charge you a foreign transaction fee when you use your American card abroad to pay in a foreign currency. Of course currency. they do. It's safer to carry Parkgeld with you, which is cash. And if mm, you want to ask if bucket. you can pay cash somewhere, you can ask, Darf ich mit Bargeld bezahlen? Oh, Bargeld. Darf ich mit Bargeld bezahlen? Can I pay with cash? This way, you're going to be safe. You're not going to pay this foreign transaction fee. By the way, mm. if you want to travel to Germany and if you don't want to be just a tourist who just walks around and looks at beautiful palaces and houses. That sounds good to me. But actually immerses in a German culture. Oh, I that would advise better. you to take a language course. And when I was 18, I went to Germany, to Berlin, to a school called WS. And I took a German course there. I stayed with an amazing local family. And the story is, you know what? Their last name was... It's not swearing, it's their last name, it's it's fuck, it's just just the same spelling, F-U-C-K. And when I first said it, I'm like, <laughs> is it real? Then I realized it's German word, yes, this is the last name, but that was so hilarious. Yeah, they were amazing, they were like the best host family in the world. They <laughs> didn't speak a word in English to me, they just used German, so I had to practice and practice all the time. So if you want to go to Germany, check out the link below. Uh, LinguaTrip was inspired. LinguaTrip is my company and it was inspired by one of those trips when I had to look for everything myself. Okay, okay. Figure out the school myself, accommodation. Link will be below. And so schnitzel already in Germany and you went out with your friends to get some, I don't know, Wiener schnitzel to eat <laughs> and get some beer. You're finished beer. with your eating and you can say, direkt nun bitte, which means check please, can I pay? Ah. And when the waiter say Direknung bitte. Direknung bitte, which means check please, can I pay? Direknung and when bitte. the waiter comes in, he says, for instance, 20 euro, or which is 20 euros, and you give him 25 because you are generous and you want to leave some tips, and you say, keep the change. Stimmt so. Uh, Stimmt so. Uh, which means, please take my money, I don't need change. Stimmt so. It, it's okay, uh, this is your tip. Stimmt so. But then you suddenly realize you want another beer and you can say noch eine bitte, which is one more, please. When you find yourself in a crowded place and you want to apologize to people that you have to kind of push them to get uh, through. That's useful. Uh, you can say If I'm going to Oktoberfest, I need to know this. Darf ich mal vorbei? Darf ich mal vorbei? And here in, in the United States, you just say hot coffee, hot coffee, hot coffee. Everybody gets out of your way. Uh, which means push them to get through. Uh, you can say, Darf ich mal vorbei? Darf 
Ich mal vorbei. Uh, which means, can I please squeeze in, get there, sorry. When you need help, you can ask, können Sie mir bitte helfen? Uh, can you please help? Können Sie can mir helfen? Können Sie mir helfen? And when you're meeting a new person and you want to say, it was nice to meet you, you can say, schön Sie kennen zu lernen. Which means, schön Sie kennen zu lernen. It was nice to meet you. If you have a friend in Germany and he has his birthday, you can say Alles Gute zum Geburtstag, which means Happy Birthday. Alles Gute. Oh my gosh, it's so long. Why can't it just be short, like Happy Birthday? Alles Gute zum Geburtstag. Wish you all the best for your birthday. The next phrase. I, can, I just can't remember this. Super easy, but again, if you are dining with Germans and if you wanna wish them a good meal, I don't. Again, in English, this is not a really common phrase. You wouldn't. Well, you would say enjoy your meal, but I feel that in Europe people use this phrase even more. In Germany, uh, you would say guten Appetit, which means enjoy your meal. When you guten agree Appetit. with somebody, you can say ja, which is yes. But you can also say, ich stimme dir zu, which means, I agree with you. And that's Oh my gosh, I'll just say, yeah. Another idiom that Germans use a lot is, der Zug ist schon abgefahren, which means the ship has already sailed. It's oh, okay. We have that same, we have the same one in, in English. Germans use a lot is, der Zug ist schon schon abgefahren. It's your chance. <laughs> Another one that I struggled to learn for such a long time because for me it didn't make a lot of sense from the start, but uh, when you agree with somebody, as I said, you can ja, and you can say na ja, but if you want to be more complicated, more um, proficient, you can say eigentlich schon aber. Again, this is the I way to say you're aber. kind of agreeing, but you have some doubts. Eigentlich schon, aber. This is time that we finish our videos and here are some ways to say bye in German. Bis später means I will see you soon. Bis see you später. Soon. Mach's gut is the equivalent of have a good one. Um, have Mach's a good day. Gut. Mach's gut. And your favorite one is tschüss, which means bye tschüss. bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. After the very end, the Woo! useful links will be below. Please check the description. That was just too much. That was way too much. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that was only 11 minutes or 12 minutes. I'm not, I can't remember. Oh my God, mosh gut. That, uh, thank you for watching, guys. <laughs> mosh gut, what can I say? This The ship has sailed for me, I think. <laughs> I'm learning German. No, I couldn't. Is this the, his, the ship so, is in? Which means, I agree with you. Another idiom that Germans use a lot is um, Der Zug ist schon abgefahren, which means to... the ship has already... Yes, yes. Uh, der Zug ist schon der Abfahren. Okay, guys, the ship has sailed on this video. So, um... Oh my gosh, there's there's just too... There's too much. There's too much, guys. Favorite one Tschub. is... Tschüss. Tschüss. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you here again tomorrow. Wow, that was a lot. Have a great day. Goodbye.